sometimes when we are finding the limit um, using the method that we just discussed, when we substitute the target x value into the function, we get 0 divided by 0. And there's a special name for this. It's called the indeterminate form. If you get the indeterminate form, which is specifically 0 on top, divided by 0 on the bottom, then you need to factor and reduce the function and then reevaluate the limit at the reduced form. So, for example, we're asked to find the limit as x approaches 1 of this function. First thing you want to do is you want to take the 1 and plug it in place of x in the function. So I get 1 squared minus 1 divided by 1 minus 1. So what we notice is that we get 0 divided by 0, which is the definition of the indeterminate form. Okay, Only if you get the indeterminate form will you be able to do this particular step. So the first thing you want to do if we get the indeterminate form is factor and reduce the function. So we're finding the limit as x approaches 1. And I'm going to factor x squared minus 1. So we're going to factor the top and the bottom of the fraction. So I get x minus 1 times x plus 1 as the factorization, difference of squares, that divided by x minus 1. So I notice that I can factor, and I can also reduce. So x minus 1 and x minus 1 cancel. And so we're left to evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 of something simpler, x plus 1. So step 2 says after you factor and you cancel, then we're going to reevaluate at the reduced form. So we're going to use the reduced form of the function to actually calculate the limit. So the limit as x approaches 1 would turn out to be 1 plus 1, which gives us 2. So the limit here turns out to be 2. Okay, so we want to factor, cancel if we get the indeterminate form, and then reevaluate the limit. All right, for our next example, we run into the same problem. When I take my target x value of 0 and I put it in place of x, we get 0 squared minus 0 divided by 0, which of course is 0 divided by 0, which is the indeterminate form. Okay, only if you get 0 divided by 0, then you want to go on to the next step, which says rewrite your function, so the limit as x approaches 0, well, we're going to factor the top and the bottom as much as we can. Now be careful, um, you have to know how to factor. And if you don't factor correctly, then you're going to miss the problem. So make sure you're careful. When we factor, the first thing we do is take out a greatest common factor. x squared minus x, the common factor there is x. So we're left with x minus 1. And we have x at the bottom. So be careful how we factor and cancel. We'll factor the top, factor the bottom. And then I notice that there's a common factor of x that cancels. So now we are going to reevaluate the limit at whatever is left for the function, at the reduced form. So we're going to take the 0 now, and now we're going to put it in the place of x in the reduced form. I get 0 minus 1, which means that the limit is going to be negative 1. Okay, so you have to know how to factor and reduce um, in order to evaluate a function at the indeterminate form. Okay, these next two are more practice a little bit with factoring and how we factor and cancel. So same concept, I'm going to take the 2 to evaluate the limit, and I'm going to put it in place of x. So we get 2 minus 2 divided by 2 squared minus 4, which gives us 0 divided by 0, which is that indeterminate form. So that means I need to factor and cancel. So we're going to evaluate the limit as x approaches 2. The top of the fraction doesn't factor, it's just x minus 2. The bottom of the fraction, once again, is a difference of squares. It factors as x minus 2 and x plus 2. Alright, so we see a common factor. I'm going to cancel out x minus 2 from the top and the bottom. Now here's where um, mistakes can be made. You want to be careful here that the top of the fraction is not just 0, and it doesn't make x plus 2 go to the top of the fraction. Anytime we cancel everything out of the top or the bottom of a fraction, we technically have a 1 left over in its place. So our reduced form will be 1 divided by x plus 2. So be careful here when you're factoring in reducing. Now we're going to reevaluate the limit using the reduced form. So we'll put 2 in place of x, 
So I get 1 over 2 plus 2, which gives me a limit of 1 fourth. So our answer for the limit here would be 1 fourth. All right. Here we're asked to find the limit as x approaches 1 of the given function. So we're going to put a 1 in place of x. So I get 1 minus 1 divided by 1 squared minus 1, which once again gives us 0 divided by 0. This is the indeterminate form. When I get the 0 divided by 0 indeterminate form, we know that that tells us that we need to factor and cancel if possible. So at the top we have x minus 1. Okay, how do I factor the bottom? Okay, be careful here. First thing I always do when I factor is take out x. Take out my greatest common factor, which happens to be x for this problem. That leaves me with x minus 1. Okay, so now I'm going to cancel common factors of x minus 1. Okay, once again, what we talked about just in the last problem, be careful. What does this mean that I am going to be left with? Not just x. Be careful there. This, the answer will be 1 divided by x. So now when we reevaluate the limit at the reduced form, we put in 1 in place of x. We end up with 1 over 1, which is 1. So the limit of this particular function as x approaches 1 would be 1.